I continue. Know, I'm to the public. Why? Well, because we are going to begin. Good morning. Good morning. Good How is morning. everybody this morning? Very good. How is everybody? Except aching a lot. Boy, aching a lot. You got body pains. Mm -hmm. Body pains from Taekwondo. Huh? Okay. What is the significance of this day? October 13th. Huh? Because yeah? Thing, what is it? The last apparition of our Okay, the 100th anniversary of the apparition of Our Lady to the three children of Fatima. Okay? Three children of Fatima in Portugal, Covari Aire in Portugal. Okay. So instead of us um, doing a gospel commentary today, I think it's, uh, it's a nice time for us to, um, to talk about the apparition of Our Lady okay, in Fatima. Of course, she appeared several times in the course of a year. Okay? And uh, the context of this was that um, these apparitions were... These apparitions happened during the First World War. Okay, 1917, today's uh, feast, 1917, 100 years ago, that's why it's 2017, right? So in 1917, the First World War was raging all over um, the world, all, all over Europe practically first. <laughs> and uh, um, so this was happening in Portugal towards the end of um, the First World War. And you would see here um, what is what is important about this apparition of Our Lady, and in all the apparitions of Our Lady, Our Lady normally uh, would appear in order to give a to give a message, in order to remind us, her children, okay, about certain things that sometimes we tend to forget. So Our Lady is here uh, being a mother to her children, because Our Lady. The Blessed Virgin Mary is truly our mother. And in these apparitions, she comes down to earth in order to remind her children again and again and again about the things that we tend to forget. The things we tend to forget. Just like Papa and Mommy would many times remind you, 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 naughty and stubborn children that you are, <laughs> about the things that you need to be reminded about, eh? about how to, how to do the things you need to do, from how to study to how to do your chores and how to live life. Your parents are always around to remind you, right? And Our Lady was being a mother. She is our mother. She's really, really, really a mother. And if you're not convinced about that yet, all you really need to do is review many of the apparitions of Our Lady and see what it is that she reminds her children about and how she exercises her motherhood over all of us. And today, I'd like us to review the reminders of Our Lady to her children, which she communicated to those three shepherd children in Portugal a hundred years ago. Okay? Today, we celebrate that 100-year anniversary. And the reason why this is very significant, this, this particular apparition of Our Lady in Fatima is very, very significant because you really see in these apparitions and in the messages of Our Lady here, you really see a very, very direct hand that God and Our Lady place in the history of mankind. Okay? That Our Lady and, and, and God Himself really intervenes in the history of mankind, in the lives of each and every one of us. The Our Lady uh, is not uh, a supernatural being somewhere that we don't know and, uh, and we do not associate with and who has nothing to do with uh, our daily lives. No, that is not right. Our Lady is very, very much involved in the, in the uh, daily affairs of each and every one of us. 
and in the affairs of the whole world. And here, in this apparition of Fatima, we can see exactly how Our Lady and God have been very, very much involved in the history of man and the lives of every one of us. Okay? And many times, these things we can only see in hindsight. So here we are a hundred years later, a hundred years after the apparitions, that we are only realizing in hindsight how indeed God and through the intercession of Our Lady have been very, very involved. Okay? How so? Okay, here we go. Let's talk about the three secrets, the so-called three secrets of Fatima, which are really which are really the three main revelations. Of course, Our Lady talked about many things in the, uh, in the apparitions, but there seem to be three main, main things that, uh, that Our Lady talked about. Okay? And here we will review these things. Let's, let's look and see how Our Lady really intervened. Okay? So, uh, these apparitions uh, happened in 1917. Okay? So, a hundred years ago. And what did Our Lady show or tell the, um, the three children? Number one, she showed them the vision, a vision of hell. And we will read and describe that vision. Number two, she talked about the, uh, the need for the conversion of Russia. And the need to put an end to communism. And coupled with that, coupled with that, that, that there will come a time in the history of mankind, okay, from 1917, there will come a time where the whole world will be consecrated to her immaculate heart. The whole world? The world, yeah, will be consecrated to her immaculate heart. The immaculate heart of Mary, okay? So it hasn't happened yet. It will happen. So Our Lady was saying it will happen sometime down the line, okay? And number three... Our Lady talks about the sufferings of the Pope. That the Pope is going to suffer terribly. And in particular, Our Lady hinted on the assassination of the Pope. Okay? Okay, so let's see. Let's go. Let's read. Okay, first, let us read about, let us read about the, um, the vision of hell. Okay? Because here is where you can realize that hell is real. Okay? Folks, those among you who up to now do not, uh, uh, um, uh, or are not convinced about the fact that hell exists, maybe this is a good time to listen. Okay? This is what Our Lady showed the three shepherd children. Our Lady showed us a great sea of fire. A great sea of fire, which seemed to be under the earth. Plunged in this fire were demons and souls in human form, like transparent burning embers. Just, just picture it. Just imagine it in your heads. All blackened or burnished bronze, floating about in the conflagration, now raised into the air by the flames that issued from within themselves, together with great clouds of smoke. Now falling back on every side like sparks in a huge fire, without weight or equilibrium, and amid shrieks and groans of pain and despair, which horrified us and made us tremble with fear. The demons could be distinguished by their terrifying and repulsive likeness to frightful and unknown animals, all black and transparent. The vision lasted but an instant. How can we ever be grateful enough to our kind Heavenly Mother who had already prepared us by promising in the first apparition to take us to heaven? Otherwise, I think we would have died of fear and terror. See, the, the, this, is, this is being written by Lucia, okay? the, uh, the oldest and the one who... Uh, outlived the other two, the one who became a nun, right? So she was writing these things in her memoirs as, uh, uh, as ordered by the Bishop of Fatima for her to write them down then. And this is what she describes about the vision of hell. Okay? So it's a good image for us to keep in our minds. That's a place we don't want to be in 
forever because it will not end. Okay? And look at how terribly fearful it could have been. It, she says, if only our mother did not promise us we will go to heaven, perhaps we could have died of fear just looking at that vision. And it lasted only an instant for them. Only an instant. Short. But it was terrible enough for her for, for the image to be imprinted in her mind for life and for her to be able to describe everything that she saw there. Okay? So this is the vision of hell. Okay? And it's a good thing for us to really, really keep keep this image. I, I'll leave this here so you can read it some more. Okay? <laughs> you can read it some more and uh, it's a good thing for us to uh, to review. Okay, the second, the second, uh, the second prom, uh, I mean, secret of Our Lady had to do with, had to do with um, the world being consecrated to her Immaculate Heart. You have seen hell where souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. To save them, to save souls from going to hell, God wishes, so she's conveying the wishes of God our Father, to establish in the world devotion to my Immaculate Heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The war is going to end. See, the war which is raging at that time in Europe, 1917. But if people do not cease offending God, a worse one will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. And it happened. World War II. Oh, really? Of course. So World War II, which broke out in uh, uh, 1939. 1939. So only about 10 years later, a little over 10 years later, another war. See? Oh, no, 20 years. <laughs> 1917 to 1939. So a little over 20 years, the Second World War broke out, which was worse than the First World War. And because, well, she was not, uh, the world was not consecrated to the Immaculate Heart. Okay, not yet. It didn't happen right away. And at the same time, people did not cease being sinful. So our Lord, well, sent a, a, a more terrible scourge. Remember how the two days or three days ago we were talking about Nineveh, right? In the, in the, in the readings at Mass, Nineveh. And our Lord also threatened, right? I'm going to, I'm going to destroy Nineveh. But... The, the nice thing was that the people of Nineveh repented from their sins. And our Lord withdrew, God withdrew His threats to destroy Nineveh. In contrast, we have the warning of Our Lady at Fatima. If people do not cease committing sins, okay, a worse war is going to happen. And indeed it happened. So until our our uh, until uh, the world is consecrated to her immaculate heart. Now, of course, that consecration to her immaculate heart happened, but already during the pontificate of John Paul II. Huh? It has it has happened. See, it has happened, but it all it happened already. During the pontificate of John Paul II on June 7, 1981. Wow. 1981. Okay. It was already during the pontificate of John Paul II. Now, all of those years, yeah. During, when he was Pope. Yeah. When he was Pope. 1981 is a very significant year in the history of the world and the history of the church. Okay. And also in my history. 1981, January 1981 was, okay, when the Pope consecrated the world 
to Our Lady, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in June. Prior to that, in May 13, the Pope was assassinated. John Paul II, 1981. Okay? There was an assassination attempt when he was there parading in the Vatican and he was shot. Okay? Oh, so he did that. And, and, and I, we will link that to the apparition. This is John Paul II. See? And in 1981, also in January of 1981, was when I first met him. See? In the Philippines. Remember? You see that picture? After that hug of the Pope? That was 1981. 1981 was the year I met two saints. And I, the year I actually held these two saints. 19, the, the first one was John Paul II in the steps of the Cathedral of uh, the Immaculate Conception. The Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception of all places okay, in the Philippines. Okay? And in, the, in, that same, in that same year, I escorted Mother Teresa. Remember? I escorted Mother Teresa as she was on her way to receive uh, Holy Communion from Pope John Paul II. See? So that year was very significant, even for me, personally. Yes, Shavel, you got a question? Okay, I'll answer your question later. Okay? So, now what was the third? What, what was the third secret about? The third secret was basically talking about the sufferings of the Pope. Okay? The third part of the secret of Our Lady, in Our Lady's words, is this. If not, if referring to Russia, if Russia were not to be converted, okay, because you did not consecrate the world to my Immaculate Heart, you know, and all that, Russia will spread her errors throughout the world causing wars and persecutions of the church. Okay? And it happened. The, go the good will be martyred. The Holy Father will, m will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. Will be wiped out. They will, there will be no more nation for them. That's exactly what happened to all of the Baltic states around Russia. The, the USSR, see, and many other countries that were practically destroyed by communism, by the scourge of communism. Okay, so that that also happened. Okay, that also happened. And uh, uh, the the children of Fatima were given a vision of the Pope being assassinated, being martyred. Okay, uh, you know, it was I mean, it was a vision. Of course, it didn't happen that way, but Later on, the, the events, the actual events, uh, uh, um, happened in a different way where the Pope was actually assassinated. Okay? Uh, and that happened in May 13, 1981. Now, there was a conversation uh, years later uh, with Sister Lucia in order to ask her to uh, uh, maybe interpret the secrets, these three secrets, in the in the um, line with the recent events, especially the assassination of the Pope. Okay, and and here is uh, let me just read this uh, this uh, excerpts of that um, interview. After the assassination attempt of May 13, it appeared evident that it was a mother's hand that guided the bullet's path, enabling the Pope in his throes to halt at the threshold of death. On the occasion of a visit to Rome by then Bishop of Fatima, the Pope decided to give him the bullet which had remained in the Jeep after the assassination attempt so that it might be kept in the shrine of Our Lady of Fatima because that, that bullet was a symbol of the fulfillment of what Our Lady said, right? that the Pope is going to suffer. The Pope was in fact assassinated. By the bishop's decision, the bullet was later set in the crown of the statue of Our Lady of Fatima. Whoa. See? That's nice. That's nice. So it's actually there now. Now, the successive events of 1989. So, 1981, the, the uh, Immaculate Heart of Mary uh, consecration, right? The assassination of the Pope. Now, later on, in 1989... 
both in the Soviet Union and in a number of countries in Europe, the fall of communism happens. Okay? For this too, His Holiness offers heartfelt thanks to the Most Holy Virgin. In other parts of the world, however, attacks against the church and against Christians with a burden of suffering they bring tragically continue. Okay? So even if communism has collapsed in, in, in uh, the Soviet Union, in, in Russia, okay, the effects of the scourge of communism continues in different parts of the world. And so what does that tell us? We still have to continue praying for the end of, of communism all over the world. And not only communism, but all of the other evils that beset our world. Okay? And, and we, we now have, have the obligation to continue praying and praying and praying for all of these evils that are happening around us. Okay? And our lady said in one of the, those operations, penance, penance, penance is what we need. Penance, penance, penance. We need to make a lot more reparation for our own sins and the sins of others. We need to pray many, many more rosaries. Okay? We need to pray many more rosaries and we need to make a lot more penance. Let us offer more mortification. Let us offer more of our inconveniences, our annoyances, our uh, 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 things that are, that are uh, inconvenient for us. Let us offer these things both for our own sins and for the sins of other people. Yesterday we were at the abortion clinic praying and we met who we think or I think might be the administrator of the clinic who was trying to shoo us away. Right? I was trying to say, hey, this is private property. You got to get out of here and you're going to park here and you're going to do this. You're going to do that. Of course, we had a little bit of an exchange and, uh, you know, I wanted to get to know her because I wanted to uh, win her over. But in that short exchange, right, uh, when I was telling her that all we are doing here was praying and that we're praying for her, we were praying for you, we're praying for her. And she said, oh, I don't need that because I am not a believer in God. Well, there are many people in this world who are not believers of God. And that is why we have to pray more and more and more and more. Okay? And Our Lady has given us a, a, a weapon to do that. And that is her rosary. This month of October is the month of the Holy Rosary. So let us use the weapon that Our Lady has left us to use. Let us use this weapon here. I, in fact, wear it on my wrist all the time, <laughs> okay? I wear it on my wrist, this rosary, see? Yeah, let me do a little advertising here. This is the rosary that, uh, you know, it's made of, it's, it's actually like, 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 like uh, bullets, like pellets, because it's actual steel, it's real steel, <laughs> see? And so I love wearing it because, you know, it's, it's my weapon. See, don't mess around with me, folks. It's I got, heavy. I got away. It's actually heavy because heavy it's all, like it's all made of steel. Thing. This is this is steel, right? What you use for your pellets in uh, your BB guns and uh, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Okay, I can whip you with this. Uh, you know, you devils, get out of my sight. Okay. Anyway, and and uh, I love to wear it. You know, not not to display it. <coughs> Not, not as an accessory because it is not, okay? And I love to wear it for my own personal purposes because it really helps me keep the presence of God all throughout the day. It helps me keep Our Lady's presence very close. And it helps me kiss that cross many times during the day. If it will help you, uh, keep the rosary close by so that you keep Our Lady close by. And that's why you kids, I always try to remind you all the time, have your rosaries in your pockets. All the time. Okay? This is our weapon. And let's use it for its purpose. Let's use it to defeat the devil. Let us use it to gain graces from our Lord and from our Lady. Because that is what our Lady promised. Let us have devotion to our Lady, devotion to the Holy Rosary, devotion to her Immaculate Heart. 
so that we may help end all the evils that beset our world today. Happy feast day, folks. Happy anniversary. Let us celebrate this day. It's a glorious, nice, happy day. Let us be thankful to our Lord, thankful to our Lady. And we're off to Mass to give thanks. Bye-bye. See you Bye. tomorrow. Bye! <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs>